Hello, today I will show you how can we assign items to a sprint. So let us open our project and you will see that in my ERP project, if I go to boards and if I go to backlogs, you will see that I have here under billing, billing goods, and then I have user stories with tasks, okay? And I have here also for another user story some tasks and for another user story some tasks, etc., etc. So, how can we assign a user story to a, a, a to sprint, put it in the sprint, or specific task? Let's go to sprints. Here in Sprints, you will see that I can, I will close this one, add new work item. But if I go, like, uh, like uh, I showed you just right now with new work item, I am going to create a new item, user story or, uh, or task or whatever. So I don't want to do that because I want to put item from a backlog to a sprint. So I should go to backlog, and this is the right way. To backlog, to my billing system, to my billing goods, and I have two possibilities. I can put the whole user story or a task. Let me show you the latest one, a task. So create a customer table in the invoicing database. Let's go to this task just to see it, and you will see that it is unassigned, it has some description, and it has st state new. I'm going back, and I'm going to click here on these three dots, and I will say move to iteration, and I will move it to the current sprint, okay? If I go now to Sprints, you will see that in Backlog, I have my uh, user story, which is in Backlog, because one of its tasks is in Backlog, but only one task is in Backlog. If I go to Task Board, in Task Board, I will see only tasks. So, in a Task Board, I will see that I have here my user story, and I have here my task, one task. So what if I want to remove task for, from a sprint? I can go to the task here, and I can click on move to iteration and click on backlog. You will see that this is, it is out of the backlog now, okay, and I can put this one as well is in backlog, and it is not in backlog anymore. So if I go to backlog, you will see that I have nothing. Uh, sorry, if you go to sprint, if you go to back, if I go to backlog again, what can I do? Another way to put tasks in the in the uh, uh, backlog is uh, in the sprint backlog is to click on task to see if everything is okay, and then go to iteration and choose iteration in which I want to put my specific task. And I will say sprint one. And I will get the same result. So you will see if you go now to sprint and if I go now to task board that this task is in sprint. But what if I want to put whole user story in the sprint? What should I do? Let me remove that. This one move to iteration backlog, and this one move to iteration backlog. Okay, let's go to backlog again. So, if I want the whole user story, it will be time consuming and annoying to go to each and every task, and you can see how many tasks do I have for this user story, to put it in a sprint one by one. So, I can put the whole user story just if I click on user story here and I 
say, move to iteration to current sprint, you will see that all of those tasks are now in the backlog. Sprint backlog, of course. I'm always talking about sprint backlog. Here they are. And you will see that each of these tasks has original estimate, which is uh, estimated in hours. For example, create a uh, customer table is eight hours. And uh, let's say design a customer screen or let's say, let's go back here, develop customer entry system is, has 40 hours. But if you go here up and see work details, you will see that according to capacity, no one has anything to do. Why is that? So that, that is because my tasks are unassigned. So I should assign them to someone and then I will see how many hours is needed for each particular resource. But anyhow, you can see here that I have unassigned 302 hours, which is capacity of all my resources. And unassigned is still zero. Why is that? That is only because if you have, like I have in my example, for each and every task, only original estimate, it will show as I show you here, that no one has anything to work and there is nothing to, uh, uh, to work on unassigned tasks. Why? And now remember this. The calculation of tasks, okay? Who is going to work, how many and how many is a uh, 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 work is assigned to John, Mary, Nenad, Paula, Peter, or unassigned, are not calculated, calculated according to something which is called original estimate. But when you do estimation, you should say how how much is original estimation, and in the first estimation. Remaining estimation is same as original estimate. Why? Because create a customer table in the invoicing database. I, let's say that the estimation is eight hours, okay? And we now know that we need eight hours. But now, when we know that eight hours are needed, we should say eight hours are remaining. So if I save and close this, you will see these eight hours are on unassigned. So remaining work is very important. Now I will put for all my tasks remaining work same as original estimate. And I will show you what is going to happen. Now you can see that I can see here remaining work for each and every task. I can see the total number of all hours here, 376, uh, and I can see that my team should work three uh, 376 hours and available is only 302 and of course, all are unassigned. So now you learn how we can do this for uh, how can we assign items to a sprint. So in my next video, I will show you how to as uh, how 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 is behavior of uh, 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 
these uh, work details, when you assign all items to specific person for specific resource, and how to make sure that everything what was planned fits into the sprint. Okay? And what if it doesn't? But be aware that when you assign items to a sprint, then that you can go to specific task here, okay, and click on here on three dots and move them to iteration, to current sprint. Or you can choose the task, click on task, and click here and choose the iteration. Or, if you want to put the whole user story, you should do it for the, for the user story here, okay, and move it to inter iteration, and the, then I will do it now. All the tasks which belong to this user story are going to be in that specific sprint. And let me now go here and change remaining work here and change here remaining work here. And when I save a close, you will see that the total work for this user story is 56 hours, 40 hours for this task and 16 hours for this task, 376 for this user story, and if I go here and choose working details, that 432 hours are supposed to be done in this sprint. And obviously, we don't have enough hours, enough capacity. So teamwork here, the total work here, is the sum of all remaining work which are at the moment written in a task. So let me show you here. I have 432. If I go here and say, oh, remaining is six, okay, you will see now it is 302. And if I go back here and put eight, it is, it will be, sorry, I didn't, I didn't, here, eight, if I say, come on, come on, you are, you're, su you're supposed to kidding me. Oh yeah, now it's still 302. How is it so? Why, why is it so? Now, one more, one more thing. Today is 2nd of June, okay? 2nd of June. And 5th of June is starting date for the sprint. So it is calculated remaining work according to this date. So it will not be affected out until I put uh, 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 the sprint is actually started. So, I should and I would show you how these figures are going back and forth when our sprint will be started. For now on, for now, you should just know that items can be, tasks can be assigned to a sprint individually, one by one, or you can assign the whole user story to a sprint, therefore, all the tasks are going to be inside of the sprint. And if you want to deal with capacity, you should have remaining work fulfilled. Hope this helps. Until then, I'll think the next time when I'm going to show you how to adjust work to fit capacity. Have a nice day.